Good morning, Marmy. Welcome back to Mom Boss of Three and welcome back to the Marriage in Real Life series. Today's video is video three of this series and the last one for this month. Maybe we'll pick this series up again in the future if you guys have more topics you want me to talk about. But today's video, I have to say, is probably the most requested and most anticipated video of this series. So today I'm talking about living with in-laws. Well, I'm talking specifically about the situation where a bride gets married, like a woman gets married and moves into the groom's family home, like the husband's family home with his family. So I know there's a lot of non-traditional ways of living these days. A lot of people live out on their own. Some people live with like, you know, the girl side of the family. There's all different living arrangements, but for the purposes of this video, I'm talking about the very super traditional situation where the wife would go and live with the husband and his family in their family home. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tina. I'm the mom of three. I put out videos here on YouTube three times a week. I hope you'll consider subscribing and joining the Marmy, which is the mom army. And you might be sitting there thinking, who are you to even give any advice on this situation? So I've been married for over 10 years, actually almost 11 years. And my husband and I started out living on our own, right? So we, we bought a house and we lived here for about six months and then my mother-in-law came to live with us. So that experience is really different than someone who goes and moves into someone else's home with their family. So my situation is definitely different than that very traditional way of doing things. But I have my experiences coupled with the experiences of tons of people around me and coupled with the experiences of those of you on Instagram who've shared your thoughts on this topic. So right off the bat, let me say this. I'm not telling you to go live with your in-laws. I'm not telling you not to go live with your in-laws. I'm just sort of sharing some advice or like nuggets of wisdom that I hope will help people in making the decision as to how they wanna live their lives. So I thought about the best way to sort of frame this video and I am going to be talking about advice or suggestions or insights in three specific areas addressing three different people. So the first part of the video, I'm gonna address the bride, the wife, the wife-to-be. In the second part of the video, I'm addressing the husband, the groom-to-be, whatever. The third part of the video, I'm talking to in-laws. That's right, get your mom and dad to watch this video. I'm addressing the in-laws directly because I think that that's kind of an area where we neglect a lot of stuff. Like we're always telling the bride and groom how to do things, but if you're going to live in someone's family home, we need to be addressing the parents as well. Okay, bride or wife-to-be or newlywed, whatever the situation, you have to realize that going into another home, so joining a family and living in their family home is no easy task. No matter how great your in-laws are, no matter how understanding you are, no matter how great of a relationship you have, if you're going to live in that home for the first time, it is an adjustment period. Like the same type of adjustment period you would have if you were living with your husband for the first time or living with a boyfriend for the first time or living with a roommate for the first time, there is an adjustment period to all living situations and living with in-laws is no different. All families are different. And as much as you think your family and the family you're moving in with are very, very similar, the way people live their lives is really different. You might be someone who's used to having a whole lot of privacy, whereas this family sits and watches TV together after dinner and they're together talking until it's time to go to bed. And that might be really difficult for you because you're not used to it. There's nothing wrong with it and you will find your own ways to adapt with that situation, but everyone's family is different. And like I said, you have to realize there's going to be an adjustment period for all parties, not just you, not just your husband, but also your in-laws. That being said, go in with an open mindset. You have to be a little bit flexible in the way you do things so that you can open yourself up to be accepting of the way different people live and how to kind of find your own groove within that home. My second piece of advice is have something that is all yours outside of the house. So whether you're working or going to school or you are working out at the gym, you're a runner, like whatever the situation may be, I feel like you really need something that's outside of the home. So during this adjustment period, you have some time to yourself. You have some time to sort of just focus on you and not worry about like kind of that awkward adjustment phase and make sure that you are remembering who you are because I think you can get really, really caught up in the way everyone else is doing things that you sort of get overwhelmed. So bottom line, don't let go of all your friendships. Don't let go of all your extracurricular activities. Don't let go of all the things that are important to you because you need those things to continue to be who you are while you adjust to this new phase of your life. So number three, it is the most important one and probably the hardest to do. You need to be able to treat 
your in-law family like your own family and not in the kind of like oh they're my family i love them i live with them kind of way but like really like your own family right so you need to respect them in the same way that you would respect your parents and i know that can be challenging because if you've just joined a family if you're living in a new home with new people and someone does something that upsets you or someone does something that you find offensive or whatever it can be really hard to tell that person i didn't like it when you did this i didn't like the way you said that because you're new there so i get it it's very very difficult but just acknowledging the fact that it's an adjustment period for you and for them can really go a long way in you guys working together to make the situation work okay so my advice to the partner so the husband number one your wife is coming into a completely new living arrangement with completely new people. Like I said, no matter how well you know each other, it's a very new situation for her. And for that reason, you need to give her a little bit of grace. And what I mean by that is you need to sort of acknowledge that this is a challenging and, you know, sometimes difficult transition. So you need to be like extra compassionate, extra understanding. You need to go out more often than you normally do. You need to spend time together just so she can still see you guys as a couple within this family, because it's really different when you get families involved. Sometimes you're so busy living that family life that you lose that kind of couple aspect. So especially in the beginning, my advice would be to do all those things more, be like almost more of a couple, do more nights out, do everything that you usually do, but more of it because you want her to feel like you're there for her and you two are still together. You're still a team, even though you're in this family living situation. Number two. So your wife is your partner. She's your number one. You need to have her back. Now, sometimes things will happen in families where like maybe the wife or the husband or whatever, someone gets offended. As the wife joining this family, it's very difficult to say anything. And it is your job to help set boundaries with family. That doesn't mean go fight with family. That doesn't mean go yell at someone because they said something that your wife didn't like. I don't mean that at all. It doesn't mean picking fights or starting fights. What it means is when she comes to you with something that's really bothered her and she shares it with you, help her set boundaries because she probably feels really uncomfortable trying to do that on her own. So if something happens in front of you where someone says something that you know, you know, your partner found really like offensive or whatever, you can sort of redirect the situation, right? Like, hey, let's not talk about that right now. Oh, did you catch the Leafs game? Like you can really easily redirect the situation or conversation in a way that it's not aggressive it's not negative like you're not fighting but that other person also kind of gets the hint like okay maybe this is not an okay topic for us right now so i want to reiterate i'm not telling you to go fight with your family absolutely not that is not going to help anything what i am saying is have your wife's back help her feel supported and in any way that you can help set boundaries in a way that she just can't at this time and number three spend time with your partner and her family, right? So whether that means a sleepover at her, her parents' house, if that means just going there for the, for the day, going out with them, taking a trip with them, like whatever it is, make the effort to spend time with her family as well. Based on the way South Asian weddings go, she might be really overwhelmed, one with the wedding just having had happened. And then also you're usually invited to attend a dinners and events right after you get married. And so they may all be from your side first before you get to her side and that's not fair either. So spend some time with her and her family, get to know them, put in the same effort that she's putting in by living with you and your family. So now we get to the in-laws. So that's right, parents, I'm talking to you. I'm a mom myself, I have three boys. One day, when and if they decide to get married, I want them to be as happy as possible. And I think that's something that most parents share in common. They all want what's best for their kids and they want their kids to have a happy, healthy life, right? And so I hope you received this message in the nature that it was intended. This is just intended to sort of share my experience and share the experience of those around me and talk about some things that I hope will help smooth the transition to living with someone new. So number one, this person is coming into your home. They're completely new. And although we acknowledge that this change is a change for you too, it's a transitional period for both the groom and the groom's family, it's a really big transition for her. She's coming into a whole new space with all new people. Sometimes there's even siblings involved, right? Like siblings of the groom or whatever. Welcome this person and allow them some space to make the home also their home. So they feel like this is my home and this is where I belong. Really simple things like getting them to redecorate a room 
or getting them to set up the kitchen in the way that they best like are really small things that you can do to help the person feel like they have a part in this family, they are part of this home, and that they are just as important as everyone else. Now, I know that those things sound really simple, but for someone coming into an environment where nothing is of their their choosing, right? Like everything was decorated and done before they got there, everything was set up before they got there, making that small gesture really would make someone feel like, okay, they want me to make this place my own, and that can go a long way. Number two, please remember, please, please, please remember when you were a newlywed couple. And for the mothers-in-law, please remember when you got married, and if you joined, your, your husband's family, please remember that time and treat your daughter-in-law with that memory in the back of your mind and remembering like some of the challenges that you had and the challenges that you faced. And with that memory in mind, give her extra compassion, especially during the initial transition phase. Number three, if you want your daughter-in-law and son to live with you, you need to show that it's beneficial for everyone, right? So if your daughter-in-law feels awkward and out of place and unwelcome in your home, she's not gonna wanna stay there very long. You need to show that there are benefits to living as a family for all parties involved, right? It's not just her adapting to everything. Everyone has to give a little to sort of find a groove that works for the family. So it's everyone's job to make it work, not just hers. And I know traditionally it was thought that the woman just gets plopped in the man's family and they just adapt. I don't know very many people who think that way, like in this day and age, but let's just put it out there like in very clear terms, like everyone has to adapt, not just her. So I apologize for like the light changing in the video because there's sun coming in and then not coming in. So I apologize for that. But I had to record this video now while my youngest son Ajith watches TV downstairs. So those are my words of wisdom to people, you know, getting married soon, thinking of getting married soon, recently married couples. I feel like marriage gets a really bad rap these days. Like people are so scared, it seems like, to get married these days. And 11 years ago, that wasn't the case. Like when I got married, it was just a thing, you get married. Now I'm not saying everyone has to get married, but what I'm saying is I think people are so scared of it, but really we can help ease the transition of marriage if it's what you want by talking about things ahead of time. And that's my whole intention of this video. Like let's, Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this transition that so many people go through and how we can make it smoother for everyone. If you want to live as a joint family, how can we make this work? And it's definitely not an easy transition. So I think the more we talk about it before the time actually comes, the better prepared we are to sort of handle the situation. So I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Have you ever lived with in-laws? And if you have, what were your biggest concerns? Or if you're planning to live with in-laws, what are your biggest concerns? Let's talk, that's what the Marmy, the mom army is here for. We would love to share our advice and our two cents about the experiences that we've had. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this marriage in real life series. I would love to know what you think about it. Do you wanna see more videos? Let me know in the comments down below. So before I end off this video, I'm going to very graciously ask that you consider nominating me for an Iris Award. There's a link in the description of this video along with all the information. It takes like two minutes to nominate me and I would greatly appreciate it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video guys and if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos and follow me on my daily vlogs. March on, Marmee.